Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends. In this lecture today, we are going to discuss uh, power and this is the second lecture on power where we are going to focus on the idea of legitimacy and hegemony and how the uh, two is connected with the discussion we have had in uh, our previous lecture on power where we have discussed uh, different conception of power, particularly Talcott Parsons, Stephen Luke's and also we have discussed the relationship between power and authority. So, in this lecture, um, we have three section. We will start with this idea of legitimacy and um, how uh, legitimate power is different from say brute or absolute use of uh, power through force or through coercion. And from there, we will discuss this interrelationship between legitimacy, authority and power and how the three are um, separate and yet overlapping in many ways. And finally, in the last part of our today's uh, lecture, we will focus on the idea of hegemony and how uh, Gramsci argued about uh, exercise of power without um, coercive means or without using the coercive apparatus of a state by gaining the consent of the people for uh, the ruling. Uh, so, uh, people willingly give the consent. So, in a way the uh, ideology or the culture of that society or that stage of history uh, is used in such a way where the ideology or the interest of the dominant becomes the kind of neutral or the commonsensical ideas or ideology of that time. So, that we will discuss in the final part of our discussion. Uh, so, to begin with this idea of legitimacy is basically about the acceptance or compliance to authority uh, by the people. So, this idea of consent, compliance or acceptance to the authority in a state by the people is something which uh, defines what we call uh, legitimacy, which talks about uh, whether certain orders or certain kinds of power and institution is willingly accepted. People are willingly giving consent to the exercise of power by a particular institution of the state or not is uh, a reflection of the uh, legitimacy that that institution or authority. Uh, exercise in the eyes of people. So, it is basically about that acceptance and compliance. So, willing acceptance or compliance without use of coercive uh, apparatus, without use of physical force, that is something which um, constitute legitimacy for an authority. So, in other words, an authority is seen as legitimate when it does not have to resort to coercive means or physical force to ensure the compliance of its order by the larger population. So, in uh, daily life you may come across many institutions of a state where you willingly accept the orders, the instructions or guidelines given by that particular uh, authority. So, that willing acceptance or compliance to that uh, order, to that guidelines, to that authority is a reflection of the legitimacy of that authority. So, it does not have to resort to violence or coercive means to ensure the compliance or acceptance on the part of the population. So, uh, in other words, the legitimacy legalizes the authority of the state 
and ensure people's obedience. Now, unlike power, legitimacy does not apply coercion or physical repression. So, in power, if you remember, we begin with this uh, idea of uh, getting another person to do something which that person would not have done otherwise. In other words, power is seen here as a kind of domination of one over the other. So, it also requires some kind of coercion, some kind of a compulsion which one agent exercise over the another agent. So, power is seen more like kind of uh, domination in a kind of exercise of physical or coercive um, elements. So, unlike power, legitimacy then does not apply coercion or physical repression or force to make people obey the authority. So, the uh, existence of authority rests on this part. So, authority as we have discussed in power and authority is legitimate power. It also exercises certain power. The exercise of that power depends on the legitimacy of that authority in the eyes of the people. So, power what we see the exercise of coercion or physical repression and it does compel or coerce the people to act in certain ways. So, if uh, in a uh, society or uh, in an organization there is a hierarchy, so that hierarchy operates to this power relation where a particular agent may get the other uh, people or other sections to behave or to act in a certain ways using the uh, power that he or she may exercise. Uh, in legitimacy, on the other hand, what we see the lot of uh, uh, the legitimacy of a particular institution and authority rest uh, on the basis of uh, its perception in the eyes of people. So, any authority or institution is most effective when it ensures the willing acceptance or compliance of the people. Therefore, authority always try to be effective by ensuring or by acquiring the legitimacy in the eyes of people. So, the people's perception about the legality or legitimacy of the institution, be it uh, uh, a state institution such like police, army, um, educational institutions, so on and so forth. So, all these institutions may have the coercive element uh, to it, but its durability or effectiveness rests on the idea of whether it is seen as legitimate force or not in the eyes of larger population. So, the idea of legitimacy or whether a government is legitimate government or not. Now, how one can assess or um, examine the legitimacy of the government if it is uh, elected by the people, elections are held in the free and fair manner. So, all these things add up to this perception among the people about the legitimacy of the organ uh, of the state or the uh, government. So, all the authority in other words always try to acquire more and more legitimacy in the eyes of uh, people. So, legitimacy in that sense is also about the perception of the people and once they perceive an institution and authority as the legitimate authority and institution, they willingly obey the order or they comply to the order of that authority and institution. So, therefore, in order to justify the political power or authority to rule over the people or to seek political obligations, legitimacy works on the basis of the consent of the people. So, people allow certain institution and authority to exercise power over them or to rule them or to govern them only on the basis of this idea that they have themselves given consent to that authority or that institution. So, suppose in modern democracy, uh, why we uh, consider or why we should obey the government which we um, have in uh, the state. The legitimacy of the government in a democracy rests on the idea that people themselves have voted that party to power. Now, this um, exercise of voting is the source of legitimacy for that party to govern that state. So, uh, the legitimacy 
for a government in a democracy rests on this idea of consent of the people. So, the rest of the institutions or the authority of the state therefore, are regarded as legitimate because they are overall supervised or uh, controlled by an elected government whom people themselves have elected. So, the consent becomes the uh, legitimizing factor for the government in a democracy. So, if there is no authority which is legitimate, then it leads to instability or unstable governments which are often confronted with disobedience of people or community. So, what happens in some territory or in some part of a nation you may find people are openly defy the institution of the state or the authority of the state and they run some kind of parallel government. Now, this you can understand, it is also about the exercise of power and the idea of legitimacy with this uh, conception which we discussed in our previous lecture about de facto or de jure authority. So, de jure authority is the legal uh, representation, but de facto is some uh, institution which is not de jure, that means it is not legal, but in actual real uh, sense it exercises all the power. So, in some reason you may have uh, this uh, presence of uh, legal or de jure authority, yet the actual control or actual power that is exercised in that region is not by uh, such institutions. And there you have the people and community openly uh, defying the institution and the authority of the state. So, what happens when there is a kind of crisis of legitimacy or lack of legitimacy that leads to such kind of confrontation. So, thus legitimacy upholds two specific things, one it upholds the right to rule by a political authority. So, who gets to rule is something which is determined by this idea of legitimacy, whether a party in a democracy has the mandate to rule. So, this is something which we see through uh, this legitimate or not only on the basis of whether that party had the legitimate mandate uh, in a free fair election or not. Another, it ensures political obligations or obedience from the people without applying physical force. This is the most crucial part of authority and institution of a state in modern democracy or modern nation state, whether where uh, legitimacy is ensured or the obligation or obedience of the state and its authority is ensured without uh, recourse to violence or coercive uh, means. Of course, those are not exception. Modern state are uh, in a way monopoly of legitimate violence. So, it can unleash violence, but whether that violence is legitimate or not. In unleashing that violence, does the state follow the procedure established by law or not? So, even the violence that is unleashed by the state can be regarded as legitimate violence if it follows certain procedure that is established by law. So, uh, the idea of legitimacy then ensures two things. First, it upholds the right to rule by a political authority and second, it ensures political obligation or obedience by the people without applying physical force. So, in some of the thinkers like Hobbes, a legitimate political authority is understood as the sovereign which protects people's life in the state of nature. So, in Hobbesian conception of state of nature, there is a constant threat to individual's life because the, everyone is competing with everyone else and everyone's life is at risk. Now, they come together through a contract and created this sovereign. Now, the uh, uh, responsibility or the um, task of this sovereign which he calls Leviathan is to protect the life of individual, that is the basic responsibility of the sovereign. So, the legitimate authority in Hobbesian conception is a sovereign which protects individual life from the state of uh, nature or the risk that is there in the state of nature. According to Rousseau, the French political thinker and philosopher, power of authority is appropriate only if it is legitimate and people have consented to it. So, the idea of consent 
for the legitimacy of political rule and political authority is very central to the idea of uh, Rousseau and his conception of legitimate authority. So, if there is no legitimate authority, then the authority prevails through coercion and makes the proliferation of brute force and coercive power in the society. It is not an authority in the real sense. So, when there is a lack of legitimacy, so in many society or many uh, states you may have military junta, dictators and authoritarian of different kinds. Now, their rule or regime is based by and large on the coercive operators, military, police, army and so on and so forth. So, when the authority lacks the willing obligation of the people, then uh, there is a kind of absolute use of brute force or the coercive power of the state and it proliferates in the society also. So, the, it leads to instability, it leads to chaos, it may also lead to anarchy and that form of power is not really a kind of authority in real sense. So, it is believed that only a just state or a state having legitimate authority is morally acceptable to the people. So, why people protest, why people challenge or defy their own government or uh, whether that protest, demonstration or criticism of the government is within the parameters of democracy or it also transcends uh, uh, that boundary. So, it is a very kind of fine balance which uh, gives you the idea about how legitimacy of a government or an institution is also about the perception of people about that institution and state. So, according to Petit, a state is just if it imposes social order that promotes freedom as non-domination for all of its citizens. It is legitimate if it imposes a social order in an appropriate way. So, the idea of legitimacy in this uh, definition is first about uh, creating a social order which people will willingly without use of coercive apparatus or physical force, people will willingly participate in that social order where the uh, freedom of each is and freedom is understood as non-domination. Everyone is free and equal member of that particular social order where there is no domination of one over the other. So, if a state managed to impose such social order which promotes freedom as non-domination of uh, each member of that society or social order, then that state is considered as legitimate state. So, if a state fails to create a social order, then it is neither acceptable nor considered as legitimate political authority. So, the uh, legitimate authority or state, its task is to create a social order where a citizen or the member of that social order will have uh, freedom which is about non-domination and they have a kind of willing uh, acceptance or compliance to the orders of that state and authority. However, when it fails to create such a social order, then people will neither accept it nor consider it as a legitimate political authority. So, for Locke, another uh, liberal thinker, legitimacy reflects on the nature of a civil state and not a kind of coercive military state. So, for Locke, legitimacy reflects on the nature of a civil state. It emphasizes on whether the transfer of the administrators or political authorities is completed in an appropriate way or not with people's consent. So, this idea of people consents in an appropriate way when it comes to transfer of power and so on is something which is very central to the idea of legitimacy. So, Locke goes on and said that no one can be put out of his state, state here means property and subjected to the political power of another without his own consent. So, this idea of consent is very central to the idea of legitimacy of the government or the state. So, further he said, whosoever has given consent to the social contract and accepted political authority is bound to obey it or its laws. So, uh, the uh, idea of then why we should obey the government or the 
institution of the state, because it is our responsibility to obey the government or the state institution, because we have given them the consent. So, the uh, very existence of the government is based on the consent of the people and once the people give the consent to the government, then it becomes the responsibility of the people to obey the government or the state institution. So, this idea of political obligation, why we should obey the government or the sovereign also rests on this idea of consent. So, first the very legitimacy of the state is based on the idea of consent of the people, then people must obey that uh, government or the state institution because they are legitimate, they are uh, governing and that legitimacy or governing is based on their own consent. So, therefore, they cannot defy the uh, laws or the uh, orders of the government. Now, if you look at this power, authority and legitimacy, it is a kind of uh, conundrum where there is a kind of overlapping and yet conceptually we can make some analytical distinction between these three terms. So, there is a kind of continuum in the interrelationship between power, authority and legitimacy. Often the nature of power and authority gets overlap. So, authority enjoys certain or exercise certain power based on uh, the legitimate perception of its existence in the eyes of people and yet authority do have some power to exercise over the people. So, the nature of power and authority gets overlapped and to separate them from each other is not that easy. It is very difficult to separate where power ends and authority begins or vice versa. So, uh, however, one can make some conceptual distinction between them. So, despite such um, difficulties in separating them from each other, we can make some conceptual distinction between them where power is more about the relation of domination and subjugation. It refers to the ability or capacity to influence the behavior of others or making them do things which they would not do otherwise. So, it is about the capacity and ability to influence the behaviors of others. It is ensured often by applying coercion or force as we have discussed in the previous lecture. Authority on the other hand does not forcibly influence individual, but it describes the very right to rule over people or influence them in society through legitimate ways without applying coercion or physical pressure. So, the uh, difference between power and legitimacy one can make is where there is a kind of coercion or coercive element in the exercise of power or brute power, but authority as a legitimate power is about exercising uh, the control or uh, rule without taking recourse to coercive or physical pressure. So, thus legitimacy comes into picture to explain the appropriate or a desirable authority which seeks political obligation or obedience of people as moral. So, this authority is also a form of power, but the way authority influences individuals in society and ensure obligation is different from the way power functions and operates in the society. So, authorities like power is also about controlling or influencing the behavior of other, but the way it ensures such control and um, behavior is very different from the functions or the way power operates in the society. So, authority guarantees in other words a legitimate kind of power. So, authority guarantees a legitimate kind of power that keeps in mind the needs and demands of the people while ruling over them. So, that is what makes the people believe or have the perception or perceive their government as legitimate government because A that government is based on their consent and B that government functions and rule them in their benefit. So, this is something which is very particular to authority. It is through legitimate power that makes people accept the conditions of power to be exercised in appropriate ways by the government. 
so this authority guarantees a kind of willing compliance or acceptance from individual to exercise power over them and thereby it leads to a stable it leads to a stable government with willing people's obedience towards rule of law and governance so the stability of the government or the state and authority comes from the willingness of uh, the people to follow their orders uh, rules and so on now uh, in the final part of today's lecture we'll discuss this idea of hegemony hegemony is also about the exercise of power but unlike legitimacy hegemony works also through a kind of persuasive ideological cultural ways where there is a absence of explicit use of coercion or uh, a physical force and yet the ruling class acquire the consent of the ruled for the benefit of uh, its class so hegemony is about the exercise of power in a way where there is no use of coercive uh, power like legitimacy but here the consent is acquired through the ideological and cultural ways where uh, the ideology of the dominant or the elite class or the ruling class is presented as the ideology of the time or the natural ideology or innocent kind of ideology without any kind of biasness but actually it represent the interest of a particular section so this is something which we will discuss through this idea of hegemony which is also about an exercise of power which is different than power authority legitimacy and so on uh, this term hegemony is attributed to italian marxist antonio gramsci it is also a form of power where the consent of the people is attained by the ruling class without using the coercive apparatus of the state so in this forms or modes of the exercise of power the consent of the people is important and it is acquired without the use of coercive apparatus of the state gramsci emphasized on the power relationship that exist in terms of ideological domination of superior or elite classes over the ruled now in any historical point of the time the dominant ideology of that society is often the ideology of those who are the elite and the ruled ruled or the subordinate section often consider that dominant ideology as a natural innocent uh, kind of ruler and they give their willing consent to that ideology so unlike marx he did not focus specifically on the economic domination of the capitalist class over the proletariat or the working class in the capitalist society so in the marxist understanding the way power operates is through the uh, means of production so those who control the means of production also control what marx uh, calls polity military so on and so forth so in marxist understanding the base is the economy which determines every sphere of uh, individual and community life and it determines all the other sphere of uh, the life now gramsci uh, moves beyond this kind of economic or pure economic uh, domination to understand how ideology culture and what marx called the superstructures also help in perpetuating the rule of one section over the other in the interest of one particular section so he mainly focuses on the ideology or influences of ideas of the elite or dominating uh, class in society and how that can influence the uh, mind and ideas of lower or the subjugated class gramsci pointed out the influence of dominant uh, culture in society and he focused on the society's superstructure as its ideology producing institution through the concept of hegemony so hegemony is about the exercise of power through these ideological institutions which ensures the dominant ideology of the elite becomes the ideology of that is or the common sense of the is so people uh, willingly give their consent and becomes the subject of that dominant ideology considering uh, uh, which conceals 
their real interest and present the interest of a particular section. Now, Gramsci talked about ideological hegemony or ideological representation of dominant culture prevalent in a society and the various institution or private associations such as family, church, schools help in propagating that ideology. In modern times, mass media or print media through mass media and print is perfect medium to circulate or influence the ideas of elites among the economically and culturally subordinate classes to ensure the domination of former over the latter. So, this uh, business of ruling and ruled that should be based on the consent of uh, the ruled is acquired through these ideological and cultural means to private institutions such as church, family, schools and so on. And these institutions help in acquiring the consent of the rule and the rule uh, itself is against the interest of the larger population. So, it is a kind of domination of the few over the many and yet the consent of the many is acquired through these ideological apparatus or institutions such as family, church, schools and so on. So, this is how power is exercised through hegemony as explained by Gramsci. So, thus hegemony explains exercise of power. However, it is about exercise of power not by applying force or coercion. So, there is no use of coercive elements. So, like media, or uh, mass media, family, church and schools, there is no real use of um, coercive apparatus of the state and yet it is in these realms where the consent for the ruling ideology is acquired. So, hegemony therefore is an effective tool for controlling and influencing the minds and thinking of people. It makes the ideas or ideologies of the ruling class appear as natural and this is the way how a hegemony effectively ensure the domination of one over the other without taking recourse to the coercive and the physical force. It ensures that the ideas and ideologies of the elites or dominants appear before the ruled or the large section of the population as natural, uh, there is no alternative. or the common sense of that particular is or that particular historical juncture. And this is how ideology help in controlling and influencing the minds and thinking of people which ultimately lead to acquire the consent of uh, the rule for the ruling classes in a society. So, Gramsci uh, focused on the actions of individual belonging to dominant classes or economically superior classes and their ideas or thinking or perception in historical period that influence the subordinate classes including the working class. So, Gramsci moves beyond that uh, economic determinism to understand how the ideas and ideologies of one class dominates or shapes the thinking or the ideas of a subordinated class uh, including the working class. So, for him both force and consent and that is uh, his conception of a state which is much more uh, comprehensive and includes both the coercive and the ideological dimension of a state. So, the force and consents exist together because ruling elites or dominant classes needs to rule or maintain hegemony not only by applying coercion, but also by achieving people's consent and this consent ensures the durability or stability of their uh, rule. So, to maintain social order, it is thus at the same time necessary to seek consent of the subordinated or the subjugated uh, classes. So, he widened uh, the concept of base superstructure model as argued by Karl Marx. So, in this uh, base superstructure model, the economy is regarded as the base which determines say polity, civil society, religion, society and so on. Uh, 
So, Marx's uh, conception of base superstructure model was that this determines the functioning of uh, the superstructure. Now, uh, Gramsci widened that uh, model of this uh, superstructure and argued uh, that um, the economic determinism is very reductionist or limited argument in terms of understanding the functioning of the superstructure, which he considered as civil society. And uh, this we can discuss that he also include in his conception of a state some more concepts like political society civil society and the state itself and he limited the economic uh, determinism that it is the economy which determines everything else. He see a kind of dialectic relationship between the base and superstructure and gives the uh, sphere in uh, superstructure a degree of autonomy where the ideas and ideology of uh, the ruling class or the dominant class is legitimized and that becomes the ruling ideology of that time. So, he widened that scope of the superstructure model and talks about the role of um, ideological and cultural institution in making the ideology of ruling class as the ruling ideology of that time. So, according to Gramsci, the state is usually thought of as a political society that is a dictatorship or some other coercive apparatus used to control the masses in conformity with a given type of production and economy is a balance between political society and civil society. By which I mean the hegemony of one social group over the entire nation is exercised through so called private organization like church, trade, unions or school. So, for Gramsci, the state is not only a coercive apparatus as Marx put it. So, for uh, Marx, state manages the common affair of the bourgeoisie and ensures its ruling over the proletariat. Now, Gramsci, the state is not really merely a coercive apparatus, but it is an institution which has a wider organic meaning to it and he argued that a state is then this definition of a state can further understood by this idea that for him the state is not merely a coercive apparatus, but it has a wider organic meaning and he argued that a state is then a combination or equilibrium of both political society and civil society. Now, what does he mean by political society? Political society he means coercive apparatus such as military, army and economy and so on. The civil society by which he means the private associations or institutions which legitimizes, which gives durability or that is the sphere where the new forms or new possibilities or new alternatives can also be created not in the sphere of political society. So, for him the state is the combination of both or the equilibrium of both civil society which is the realm of culture, ideology and so on and political society which is the realm of uh, the coercive apparatus, military, economic and so on. So, uh, civil society constantly create and recreate the hegemony. So, it is the sphere where the real battle of ideas and ideologies are actually uh, 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 debated, discussed and fought over. So, um, civil society constantly create and recreate the hegemony of dominant class ideas really as the natural and the common sensical ideas or ideology of this. So, so, the making of the ideology of ruling class as the natural or the common sensical ideas or ideology of the time is the battle which is fought in the sphere of civil society and not in the political society. So, in summary, one can argue that through hegemony, a ruling class in the society acquire the consent of the people over whom it rules. So, the hegemony is an exercise of power through which ruling class in the society acquire the consent of the people over whom it rules without taking recourse to the coercive apparatus of the state. So, we have seen in this lecture that how legitimacy is about an authority 
which exercises power without taking recourse to the coercive apparatus of the state. And uh, then we have discussed the uh, relationship between power, authority and legitimacy. And finally, in the last section of our lecture, we have discussed the idea of hegemony as an exercise of power through the uh, Gramscian conception of hegemony as an exercise of power, whereby the ruling class uses the institution in civil society such as family, church, trade union and so on to uh, make uh, its ideas or ideology appear as the ruling ideology of that time or natural or the commonsensical ideology of the time and that it exercises through uh, hegemony, it acquires that hegemony without taking recourse to the coercive apparatus. So, it acquires the consent of the uh, rule without taking recourse to the coercive elements of the state. So, these are some of the things which we have discussed today. For this lecture, you can refer to some of these books like Rajiv Bhargav and Ashok Acharya, Political Theory and Introduction. John Hoffman, you can also see this idea on power and authority and then you can also refer to these two writings on the idea of hegemony and power and so on. So, that is all for today's lecture. Thanks for listening.